showing up, whether it's 20 people, 30 people, five people. I mean, literally, we was in Fairville. I, I mean, when we started that thing, it was literally four people in the audience. By the time we finished, it was 50 people in that room. So to like go from, you know, like they were like, man, you going hard. Are like, you really talking to us like it's a bunch? No, somebody else would have been like, oh, it's four people in the room and I, I'll wait. But I was like, no, we're going to start and we're going to get it going. And it just filled up because what happened was in the middle of all of that, while I was going through it, these niggas was texting, telling their friends, like, get your ass down. This shit is real. Because in all of these other cities, there used to be people showing up with game. Like, I'm going to sign you. We're going to put you on. We're going to do this. Or niggas not being who they really are. So when they really get in that room and they get to be around somebody who really is that person, it's like, they're like, wow, this is real. That people are throwing conferences and stuff in the city and they trying to chase the people and get over and they're going to try to come in here and throw their conference and make it better and make it Let me say, we ain't shysting no goddamn body. First of all, the shyster to me is the person who got got because the person who got 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 should have did their homework on the people they were dealing with. So when people like to use that word shyster and they want to go point a finger, don't point at the person who got you, point at yourself. Because if you would do your homework and you would do your research on these people that y'all dealing with, man, y'all would find out y'all throwing money away. Ain't no such thing as a package. That package is the same package they're giving every goddamn body. And they ain't using it for to help you. It's like if you're getting any radio spins right now, think about it. Are you getting what is the result of your here I get booked, not getting signed? How am I gonna get booked? Who's booking? Who's gonna buy my merch? Who's gonna buy my product? Who's gonna, you know, one song at a time. I don't know people. So literally, if you get one song, then that should mean I gotta introduce myself to all these different people. Like what Danny said, literally, if, if all of you in this room represented what we call tastemakers, which is DJs, promoters, different people and all like that, that means literally, these are the people you're supposed to know before the people. But the tastemakers are delegates. So people like me, because of what I'm doing, I'm considered a tastemaker. Why am I considered a tastemaker? Because I influence a large number of people. Anybody who influences a large number of people is a tastemaker. And those are the people you really need to get. Because those are the people who make those people go by. We don't, in the real industry, we don't, y'all never heard of it's not just the people calling in that's paying attention, it's the commercials. Because when they walk in the room and the salesperson walk in there, the account person, you know that they actually program almost what they want, they, what records they want to play with their commercial. And if they hear a Lil Wayne record and they know Lil Wayne is hot, they're going to say put Lil Wayne first and put 2 Chains next. They're not going to say put your record next, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, all of put you know all of you in this room represent one Beyonce record in terms of radio spin. So when Beyonce plays, that means that they know it's going to be a high volume of people listening. In order for you to add up to a Beyonce spin, all of y'all have to they have to do a segment on y'all, and that's why they do the new artists, new music segments because it takes all of you to equal one person. saying, hey, we need this for a candy bar. I was like, well, fine. They was like, you got to take these three words. It got to be DJ, it got to be fun, it got to be, you know, got to be danceable. So I wrote it basically for a candy bar ad in Japan. And it did get picked, but it became my most licensed little song in America for whatever reason, because I hate the song. But, <laughs> you know, it is, it ended up actually on Dance Moms. They actually did a routine to it and everything. And I was totally shocked because I'm like, why did you do it? <laughs> but that just goes to show you any record can be, you know, a placement for you. And part of my singing people, I'm not the best singer at all. Sure. Did the track? Uh, this guy out in, uh, oh, it's not even on, is it? Oh. Um, you haven't went through a consulting thing with me? Um, and some of you have. 
and, and basically in the consulting, I just try to figure out what you're trying to do. Then after I try to figure out what you're trying to do, then the next step for me is to say, okay, take these steps and start doing it. And I see some of you actually taking those steps and, it, and that's encouraging. Um, one of the things I do want, I want y'all to understand is that this only works if we keep reaching out to people and we keep spreading this word that it's real. Um, because we need y'all help to do that because actually we're being watched whether y'all know it or not. This, this only can happen because Candy just happens to be the kind of person who really believes in what we're doing and she's here because she believes in it. When some people come to me like, what's the membership? We usually don't have like a long sentence leave. I kind of do a consulting thing. Some 